This video is part of our tutorial series for the SIG300. I'm Jazz, an AI avatar, and I will guide you through this tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to make use of HTTP capabilities of the SIG300. For demonstration purposes, SIG field analytics will be used for a sensor data visualization. HTTP, REST is a common way of getting data from industrial devices into the IT infrastructure of an end user. All variants of the SIG300 devices comply with REST API defined by the IO Link Consortium. The SIG300 acts as an HTTP server. This functionality is always available out of the box. It is possible to read and write any kind of data available for a sensor connected to the SIG300. Here are some examples of HTTP REST use cases for the SIG300. SIG Field Analytics is a software that can be used for data visualization, storage, and analysis. It can be hosted both in the cloud and on site. Its intuitive UI makes it possible to create customized dashboards empowered by a library of widgets. It supports many industrial communication protocols and can utilize both the HTTP and MQTT capabilities of the SIG300. For this tutorial, we will concentrate on the REST communication. In this example, SIG Field Analytics is installed on the computer connected to the SIG300 with an Ethernet cable. SIG Field Analytics will act as an HTTP client fetching the data of the SIG MPB10 vibration sensor connected to port 3 of the SIG300. Our goal is to show the data of the MPB10 vibration sensor along with a couple of informative widgets inside SIG Field Analytics. Useful HTTP REST endpoints for communication with the SIG300 can be found in the SIG300 operating manual. First, let's connect the MPB10 sensor to port 3 of the SIG300. We will need to log in as a service user to configure the SIG. Now let's upload the IODD file of the MPB10. The IODD files for SIC sensors are available on the official SIC website. Go back to the web UI of the SIG300 and open the IODD file manager. Select the IODD file for the MPB10 that you have saved previously on your computer. Select port 3 from the ports on the left side. It is important to allow the process and service data access for REST UI. Open SIC Field Analytics by accessing the local host with the port that you have selected during the installation. The default port is 8080. Enter the credentials and log in. Open the data source menu from the tab list on the left and navigate to Protocol Connection. Add a new source by clicking on the plus sign in the top right corner of the window. We are going to get a message with process data from the MPB10 sensor connected to the SIG300. For this reason, let's call our new source MPB10 process data. Leave the connection protocol as HTTP. This means that SIG field analytics will act as the HTTP client. The method used is get. Enter the URL from the example. The first part of the URL is the IP address of the SIG300. In the example, master one port three is a device alias, which can be found and edited in the port settings of the SIG300. Get data means that we want to receive only incoming data from the sensor. The last part defines how we want to receive the message content. 
We will receive the content in a pre-processed format according to the IODD file of the sensor. Click Test to fetch the message. The received message format will be used in the following configuration. Click Next in the bottom right corner. This screen allows you to store specific keys from the received JSON message payload in the database. Activate Store Data Key Toggle. The Refresh Frequency field sets a cycle time of fetching the payload from the SIG300. Change it to the recommended minimum of one second. You might have noticed that the fetched message contains many keys or parameters. SICK field analytics allows to store only specified keys in order to save memory and increase convenience. Let's add vibration data as data keys to store. In the drop-down menu, you will find a tree structure that corresponds to the fetch JSON message hierarchy. Navigate to the parameter of VRMSX, which means vibration velocity over the x-axis, and select its value. Let's assign a meaningful name to the selected data key. Tags can be useful for data filtering during analysis in case there are many data sources and keys. Notice that it is possible to store data only on change to save space, or to store the differences between latest and current values. Let's add the vibration velocity keys for axis Y and Z in the same way. Make sure to click the Save button at the bottom right corner of the window. We can see that the data has been successfully received. We are ready to create a data report. Open the Historian tab from the menu on the left side of the screen. Select our freshly created data source in Data Source Name field. Click Search. You will find all stored values of the received messages from the SIG 300. Historian Data Report allows users to aggregate, group, and select the date range of the data. Doing so makes further analysis more convenient. The reports can be used as a source of information for dashboard widgets. It is also possible to export reports as a CSV file. Let's save our report and give it a meaningful name. It is finally time to visualize our data. Open the Dashboard tab from the menu on the left side of the screen. Add a new dashboard and give it a meaningful name. Unlock the dashboard with a lock sign in the top right corner of the screen. Add a new widget. SICK Field Analytics has a large library of widgets for data visualization. Select the FlexLine chart and press Next. Select our freshly created report as a data source for the widget. Save it and press Next. Now we need to select what data of the selected data source we want to show in the widget. Each point of the chart corresponds to some data key in the array of data. In our case, the array represents the rows in the saved report. Select the rows array as a data array. 
Then select the data key that corresponds to our x-axis vibration value in a report row. Give it a meaningful identifier. Now we can repeat the same for axis Y and Z. Also, select an event time data key from the rows array as the last parameter. We have now finished specifying what data we want to show in the widget. Press Next. Here we can configure how we want to show the data in the widget. Each series will result in a separate line on the chart. Give the first series a meaningful name. Select our time series for the x-axis and our vibration value for the y-axis. Repeat the same for the Y and Z axis. Let's change the series color to be able to distinguish them from each other. Select where you want to show the legend of the series. Give the widget a meaningful name. Press Save. Now we can enjoy our new widget that shows the vibration data changes over some period. Let's create a simple temperature widget to show the latest temperature measurement received from the MPB-10 sensor. Unlock widgets and add a new widget. This time select thermometer. Press next. This time we are interested in the latest value received from the sensor so we can use the created data source. Press Save and proceed to the next step. Select the temperature value from the received process data payload to show it on the widget.
Press Next. It is possible to edit the minimum and maximum widget values. It is also possible to add more value intervals to indicate it in different colors. Give the widget a meaningful name. Now we can see the sensor's temperature in real time. Feel free to edit the widget to change the styling of the visualized data. You have now learned how to visualize sensor data by using SICK field analytics. If you are interested in learning more about the SIG300, please refer to our further tutorials. Thanks for watching.